Hello students and welcome to my channel MathSub. So today in this video, I will talk about multiple integrals, right? So for doing multiple integrals, you must have a knowledge about curve tracing. So if you haven't watched my videos on curve tracing, do watch them before you go with this video of multiple integrals, right? So in this video, I will be starting with the topic of multiple integrals. So this will basically focus on the concept of multiple integrals and how do we do simple multiple integral questions, right? So to begin with, how do we move from single integration to multiple integration? Let's see. Now, whenever we talk about single integration, if you remember, what is it? We define it as the area under the curve, right? So if we have any curve like this, so we just make partitions of this curve under this area and integration from x1 to x2 to xn is basically defined as the sum of all the areas that come under this curve, right? So we can write it as summation or integral a to k fx dx is limit as n tends to infinity f of x1. So if I consider one of these sections, this can be considered as a rectangle. So the area of a rectangle is length into the breadth. So it is f of x1 into the x1, the breadth, right? Similarly, the delta x1. Similarly, the second rectangle will have the area f of x2 into delta x2, so on. So as you increase the refinements, you will get a better approximation for the area. So that is why we take the limit as n tends to infinity, right? So this was single integration or the geometrical interpretation of a single integral that we do in plus two, right? Now, how does it consider, how do we go to multiple integrals now? So whenever we have multiple integral, we consider a function f of x, y that is depending on two variables, that is x and y, and it is defined in the finite region of the x, y plane, right? So we divide A, the region, entire area A into elementary areas that is delta A1, delta A2, delta A3 and so on up till delta An. So then double integral over A f of x comma y dA will be defined as limit as n tends to infinity f of x1 comma y1 into delta A1 plus f of x2 comma y2 into delta A2 and so on up till f of xn comma yn into delta An. And as we take the limiting case, n approaches to infinity. And if I take the limiting case that all these areas, they tend to zero, then this sum will become the value of the double integral f of x comma y into d. Right? Now, this was the concept of multiple integrals. Now, how do we actually perform the multiple integrals? Right? So, there are two methods. Whenever we say that we have an integral f of x comma y dA, what is the meaning of dA? dA is the area, right? So this can be defined either as dx dy or it can be defined as dy dx, right? When I say dx dy or dy dx, it doesn't mean that they are same, right? It means that we are defining some order, either x first, then y, or we define y first and then x, right? So whatever is the value of dA we are choosing, Accordingly, we have to put the limits, right? So it doesn't mean that whenever, if you feel like you can put dx dy or you can write dy dx, the limit will remain same. No, the limit will change according to whatever order you fix it, right? So if I write dA as dx dy, then the inner integral, we will integrate with respect to x. And when we integrate it with respect to x, we will keep y constant here, right? So the variable y will act as a constant and whatever answer we get for the inner integral, we will take it as an integrand and we will integrate the outer one with respect to y now, right? So what will happen? X will go away in the, sec in the inner integral. So we will be only left with one variable that is y. So we will integrate it with respect to y, right? Now how to do it with the other method? So this is what is the first method that we are integrating. Now, uh, you can see that I have kept the order as dx dy. Now, in the second case, we are keeping the order as dy dx. So, when we write dy dx, that means we are integrating the inner one with respect to y and the outer one with respect to x. Right? Now, how do we do it? 
whenever we are integrating with respect to y, we will always take a strip parallel to y-axis and we'll take a strip parallel to y-axis and we will see where is your curve entering it. Where is that strip entering, right? So the, you can see that the strip is entering on this curve. So we will note the value of y from here. So if y is f of f1x, we will fix it as the lower limit as y1. And now we will see that where is the strip exiting your area, the surface. So here it is exiting. So here we will note the value of y. And suppose y is f2x, we are denoting it with y2. So the upper limit of the inner integral will be till y2, right? And then to check for the limits of x, you can see that the outer integral is depending on x. So we will see what is the minimum to the maximum range of x. So the region, if I just drop a perpendicular on the x-axis, we see that the minimum value of x here is a and the maximum value of x is b, right? So we will fix up the limits of x as a to b. So this is how we will calculate the values of the limits for the values of x and y. So the first method denotes when we take the inner integral with respect to y and the outer integral with respect to x. So now let us change its order and let us see what happens when we take the inner integral with respect to x now, right? So now we take the inner integral with respect to x. Now when I take the inner integral with respect to x, what will happen? To calculate the limits of x, what we will do? Now, since it is x, we will take a strip parallel to x-axis. And now we will see that where the strip is entering your region. So, the strip is entering the region over the surface. So, we will note the value of x here. So, x is denoted as f1y and we are denoting it with x1. So, the low, lower limit of x will become x1. And likewise, we will see where is your strip exiting that surface. It is exiting here. So, here the value of x is f2y and we are fixing it as x2. So, the upper limit of x will become x2. Now, once we take the strip, we will only take either a strip parallel to x-axis or a strip parallel to y-axis, right? To get the outer limits, we will not take strip. Now, since it is with respect to y, we will check what are the minimum and the maximum values of y. So, for y, we will drop a perpendicular on the y-axis and we will check what are the minimum and the maximum value of that region, right? So, here you can see that the minimum value of y is c and the maximum value of y is d. The area is contained between y equal to c and y equal to d. So, the lower limit becomes c and the outer upper limit becomes d. So, this is how we fix up the limits of x and y, right? So, if the limits are already given to you in the question, it's very good. Then you don't have to work out. But if the region is given and you have to get the limits, then this is the method how you calculate the limits of x and y, right? So, now let us do a numerical and see how to do it. So, here it is given that evaluate integration 0 to 1, 0 to x, x squared plus y squared dA where dA indicates small area in x and y plane, right? Now, first of all, we have to check out that what is dA? Is dA dx dy or is dA dy dx? From where we will get to know that which one it is? From the limits, right? And basically from the limits of the inner limits. You can see that the inner limit is from 0 to x, right? So, when I have a function of f of x of y is equal to some constant c, if I take this with respect to x, so can x have the limit from 0 to x? No, obviously, x cannot go from 0 to x. It has to be the other variable, right? So, that means the inner integral is with respect to y. So, if it is 0 to x here, and we have the integrand as x square plus y square, then the inner integral has to be dy because y can be from 0 to x. If I write x here, then x cannot be from 0 to x, right? Okay. 
So now we will fix up the inner integral first. Now inner integral is with respect to y. That means we have to integrate this with respect to y keeping x constant, right? So we integrated 0 to 1. Now x square is constant. So integration of x square with respect to y is x square y plus integration of y square is y cubed by 3. We put the limits 0 to x and the outer integral is with respect to x now. So let us put the limits. Now the limits are to be put in y not in x right. So I like write x square. I will put the limits in y. So this is x minus 0 plus 1 by 3 is constant. We write x cube minus 0 and we have integration with respect to x. So now this is 0 to 1. x square into x is x cube and here we have x cube by 3. So before I perform the integration, let us add them. So I get 0 to 1. So this is 4 times 4 by 3 times x cube dx. So now you can see that this integral is only left in x. So when you integrate it with respect to x, 4 by 3 can be kept constant. Integration of x cube is x4 by 4 and we take the limit from 0 to 1. So 4 cancels and when I put the limits, I get 1 by 3 as the answer. Right? So I hope this is clear. So now, Let's move on to another question where the limits are not given and we have to calculate the limits by drawing the region, right? So we have to evaluate double integral over the region R, x plus y dy dx, where R is the region bounded by x equal to 0, x equal to 2, y equal to x and y equal to x plus 2. So it is very easy to plot this region. x equal to 0 means its y-axis x equal to 2 means if I just draw a rough plot. So if I just draw a rough plot of this, I get this is my x and y axis. So x equal to 0 will be my y axis, right? x equal to 2 will be a line parallel to y-axis passing through the point 2 then y equal to x is this line and finally so this is x equal to 2 this is x equal to 0 and then we have the line y equal to x plus 2 so if I draw plots if I put x equal to 0 y is equal to 2 so one point is 0 comma 2 and the other point is if I put y 0 I'll get x as minus 2 so it is uh, so if I just extend this line over here and now minus 2 will be somewhere here and minus 2 comma 0. Uh, so if I draw this it will be a line like this. Right. So now what is the intersection of all these four lines? Can you see that this is the shaded portion? Right. So you calculate all these intersection points. So this point is 0 comma 2. This point is the intersection of y equal to x and x equal to 2. So if x is 2 then y has to be 2. This intersection point is the intersection of the line x equal to 2 and this line is y is equal to x plus 2. Right. So here if x is 2 then y happens to be 4. Right. So we got all the intersection points and of course this point is 0 comma 0. Right. So I'll show you the plot. So this is the plot. Now to calculate the integral, let us set up the limits. So we have x plus y. The order given is dy dx. So for dy, what we will do? We'll take a strip parallel to x-axis. Right. So this is the strip. Now to check the lower limits, we will see where is the strip entering this region. This is my region R, right? Now, where is the strip entering the region? At this line. So I have to fix up the value of Y. So what value is Y taking? Y is taking value X. So we will take the lower limit as X. And now 
where is the strip exiting the surface at this line and at this line the value of y is x plus 2. So I will take the upper limit as x plus 2. Now to fix up the outer limits we will check the minimum to maximum range of x. So x is minimum value is here, maximum value is here. So what are the values of x? x goes from 0 to 2, right? So let us try to integrate it. The inner integral is with respect to y, so we will keep x constant. So we have 0 to 2, we'll integrate it with respect to y. So we will get x into y plus y square by 2. And we will put the limits as x2, x plus 2, right? And the outer integral is with respect to x. So now when we put the limits, we get x. Now we have to put the limits in y. So this is x plus 2 minus x. I can take out half constant and I will get x plus 2 whole square minus x square. This is what I'll get and integration is with respect to x. So from here x cancels. <coughs> the first term will give me the value to x. Now, what about the second term? When I expand this, the terms that I will get is x square plus 4 plus 4x minus x square. So, x square cancels. 4 plus 4x divided by 2 will become simply 2x plus 2dx, right? So, this will become integration 0 to 2, 4x plus 2dx. And now, when I integrate it, Integration of 4x will become 4x squared by 2. Integration of 2 will become 2x and I'll put the limits from 0 to 2. So 2 cancels. I'll get 2. When I put the upper and the lower limit, this would be 4 plus 2 into 2. So it is 8 plus 4. That is 12 is the Right? So I hope you got how to calculate the limits when the region is given to us. Right? Okay. Next, I will give you these four exercises to do. So, do try them and do let me know if you couldn't solve any of the questions. Right? The answers are also given to you. So, do try them. They are very interesting and it will help you to understand that whether you got this concept or not. Right? So, do comment me if you have any doubts in all these questions and Thank you so much for listening to me and if you haven't subscribed my channel, do subscribe it to get the latest updated videos. Have a nice day and you will definitely succeed when you try, right? So maths always comes from practice. Thank you so much.